Our next speaker today is Dr. Anna Lundgren. She's the Senior Research Fellow at uh, Nord Regio, an international research institute for applied research in regional development under the auspices of uh, the Nordic Council of Ministries. Uh, Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you so much uh, and thanks for the invitation uh, to the organizers and I will try to share my screen here. Uh, there we go. So can you see my screen? Yes, that's perfect. Excellent. Uh, I'll see here if I can also see you. So, I um, thanks again. Uh, my name is Anna Lundgren. I'm a senior research fellow at Nordregio, which is a research institute for applied research in regional development. And we work uh, under the auspices of the Nordic Council of Ministers. And I will present to you today uh, three reports, the results from three different reports that we uh, published in October last year. Uh, and these are a result of a two year work on, on uh, digital solutions uh, in healthcare and care in uh, rural and sparsely populated areas. So the first report was on digital healthcare and social care. The second report uh, was an addendum to what is called the state of the Nordic region, where we present statistics uh, basically on how the Nordic regions are doing. And we had a, a special issue on health, well-being and digitalization. And as an addendum to the first report, we also produced an accessibility study. Uh, and all these reports will be found in our website and I will show a link at the end of my presentation. So now if I change the picture, can you see my next picture? I hope so. Yes, yes. yes it's okay. Perfect, thank you. Just to know that it's working. <laughs> So uh, what we did in our study was to uh, investigate how healthcare and care with distance spanning solutions work in, uh, in seven different regions across the Nordic territory. And in the map here, you can see which regions that uh, were selected. So it was North Jutland in Denmark. It was Sognenfjordana in Norway. It was Westerbotten. Uh, where you also find a center for rural medicine and Vesterbottom was actually the initiator for this project. Uh, and it's South Karelia in, in Finland, it's parts of Greenland, it's Eastern uh, Iceland health region and it's uh, two municipalities in the Faroe Islands. Uh, so we looked into both uh, region and uh, one or several municipalities within that region. Since uh, healthcare and social care is differently organized in different countries, but common to the Nordic countries is that social care is a responsibility of the local authorities, uh, whereas healthcare is either a responsibility for the region or for an association of municipalities or for the state. So we have some differences when it comes to organization, but when we did this study, we looked into one region and one municip municipality in each of the Nordic countries. Uh, and uh, what we also did was that we looked into the accessibility issue that was raised in the, in the Mentometer before. And in this, uh, in this slide, you can see the differences when it comes to accessibility to outpatient primary care in those regions studied. Uh, and, and basically the more, uh, the more pink or the more purple the colors, uh, the uh, the uh, the worse is the accessibility, and the more yellow colors, the better is the accessibility. Uh, and as you can see in North Jutland, which is a region in, in northern part of Denmark with a population of close to 600,000 inhabitants, you can see that they have 165 healthcare facilities within this region, uh, and that the accessibility is is very good. 
Uh, to the right, you find a South Karelia, which has a population of 130,000 inhabitants and only 11 healthcare facilities with outpatient primary care, uh, which means that they have one fifth of the population of North Jutland. But still, 90% uh, of the population in South Karelia can reach outpatient primary care within 10 minutes. And, and now when we're talking about uh, about uh, time, we, we're talking about driving times to the closest healthcare facility. Uh, in Vesterbotten to the right, you have a population of 270,000 inhabitants and 80% of the population can reach those fertilities within 10 minutes. Uh, whereas in the two bottom, Sognanfjordana and Eastern Health Region in Iceland, uh, you can find that the, the accessibility is, is, uh, is less in Sogn and Fjordana, 50% of the population of 110,000 inhabitants can reach this outpatient primary care within 10 minutes. And in Eastern Iceland, uh, two thirds of the population can, can reach those facilities in 10 minutes. Uh, so this accessibility to outpatient primary care, and we also did it, the same kind of study for, for hospital care, uh, shows both how the healthcare is organized within those regions, whether they have many facilities or fewer facilities, but it is also a result of the landscape. Uh, in Sognenfjordana in Norway, you have the fjords landscape, uh, which means that the driving distances are longer. Uh, and the same goes for the very remote areas in Eastern Health region in Iceland. Uh, another issue that we looked into uh, was the accessibility to broadband that was also mentioned before. And in the map here, you can see the households without access to a fixed broadband at a download of 30 megabits. The figures are from 2018 uh, and, and the plots here you find are municipalities. And as you can also see that it is ma mainly rural areas where you don't find this accessibility to broadband, uh, fixed broadband uh, of 30 megabits. Uh, at the same time, we can see that the use of the internet to access healthcare information and healthcare services is increasing in all countries, in all age groups and at all locations. So the access to broadband and to, uh, to internet access is very important to, to, um, as a counterforce for, for the digital divide and not to increase the digital divides. When we talk about digital divides, we may talk about um, uh, different age groups uh, being more, uh, more keen on using those digital services, but we all may also talk about this urban and rural dim dimension. Uh, we when we explored the case study regions, we decided, divided the, the types of, of services uh, uh, into different groups. So the first group of distance spanning solutions that we came across in the case study regions were the distance, uh, the video consultations. And as you can see here, it's a citation from a nutritionist in Vesterbotten that says that this is first and foremost about flexibility and accessibility. And those video consultations, they means increased accessibility, both for patients and for the staff. It means increased flexibility, uh, being able to, to take the meeting wherever you are, uh, uh, for example. And it is also uh, uh, a way uh, to manage the recruitment challenges. Uh, as we heard before, we also learned in our case study regions, we could see a lot of similar problems with them, the ones that were mentioned from, from Wales, that there is uh, large problems when it comes to recruiting staff for healthcare and elderly care, and also to retain the staff in those areas. And with the possibility of video consultations, also the staff can, can live in one place and, and still work with their patients uh, remotely. 
And then finally, uh, it also increased well-being uh, for the patients not having to to drive to have this consultation, but could have it from from home. A second group that we uh, came across uh, were those digital meetings within healthcare. Uh, many of those healthcare facilities in rural and remote areas are quite small. And uh, with uh, those digital meetings within healthcare, they, the staff working in, in rural and remote areas can get access to specialized healthcare. They can have second opinions from, from uh, healthcare personnel from, from hospitals, for instance. Uh, it also facilitates the knowledge sharing between peers and between different groups within the healthcare sector. Uh, usually you will have a whole group of, of healthcare staff having to meet to discuss individual patients from different perspectives. And these digital meetings, of course, share this knowledge sharing. It also increased uh, quality. Uh, you can make sure that the information you want to share uh, is shared. And of course, the less traveling. We're coming back to the accessibility again. A second group, uh, uh, no, a third group that we came across in our study uh, that goes for the elderly care mainly, mainly, and that is the passive warning systems that we find in elderly care. So the most common uh, tool or solution we found was this uh, wristwatch with an alarm button uh, where elderly uh, can push the button uh, and it goes directly to the, the elderly care services who can then pay attention to, to the elderly who has pushed the button. But we also we also find uh, diff other tools such as sensors of different kinds that, for instance, uh, al alarm when when elderly leave their home or when they leave their bed uh, in the middle of the night, uh, things like that, that can increase the quality and also increase the sense of security of the elderly, of the healthcare staff and of the relatives to the elderly. Uh, so it's, it has the benefits of increased safety for, for both citizens and relatives. Uh, it gives the possibility to stay at home and also less traveling for the home care services if they can attend to the elderly living far away uh, by digital tools uh, and not having to drive uh, at all instances. So that was the third category that we came across in, in our studies. But we also found many more examples. And of course, those digital health platforms, uh, they play an important role where, where, where healthcare data uh, and with, when we talk about personalized health, all healthcare data is, is assembled in, in one place and we find those digital health platforms in, in all the countries we studied. Uh, but we also came across semi-digital solutions such as virtual health rooms in Westerbotten or the Mallow Mobile Clinic uh, that you see here on the patient, which uh, or in the picture, which is a mobile clinic uh, used in South Karelia. And some of the key learnings to, to finalize. Um, we start with, let's start with the obstacles. Um, uh, we found quite many obstacles. Uh, uh, one of them was the lack of change management and digital skills. Uh, uh, that has to do with leadership and management uh, within the healthcare sector and the social care sector. Another area where we found uh, obstacles are within the legislative sector, uh, and that has to do with data security and patient data legislation that was also mentioned here in the in the previous uh, by the previous speaker. We also find uh, uh, technical obstacles having to ha that have to do with with lack of interoperability of data systems and user friendliness of those systems. 
uh, where we found that it's very important to um, actually involve the healthcare staff in developing those digital tools to make sure that they're user friendly both for the healthcare staff and for the patients. Uh, economic ex examples of economic obstacles were the lack of economic incentives and resources, uh, resources such as, for instance, the time to try out new solutions for healthcare personnel. Uh, and then finally, uh, obstacles that ha have to do uh, with with the culture or with the, the ethics uh, to make sure that the digital solutions are compatible with healthcare ethics uh, and also to deal with a potential lack of interest. When it comes to the key learnings on, on the positive side and the effects and the potentials, well, first and foremost, when, when we wanted to look into the effects of using digital solutions in healthcare and care, we find that in research, we find that, that effects have been studies for individual solutions, but we don't find so many studies from a systems perspective. So that is an area where we would look forward to, to more studies. Uh, but talking about the effects and the potentials, we find those mainly uh, regarding quality, efficiency, inclusion and accessibility. So digital solutions in healthcare and care means less traveling for patients and for social care workers. It means better access to specialized healthcare uh, increased flexibility for patients and healthcare professionals. Um, it may facilitate the recruitment challenges that we find in, in rural areas. And finally, uh, increased well being and feelings of safety for patients and citizens. So, those were some of the key findings from those studies that we have been conducted. And if you want to learn more, uh, you may uh, want to look into our website, nordregu.org, or the, uh, the website uh, healthcareatdistance.com, where you find many more studies uh, that were conducted within this uh, project. Uh, you find a report, for instance, on 24 practical solutions from the Nordic regions that have been tested, uh, not only in those regions mentioned, but also elsewhere. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks a lot, so much, Anna. Anna. It's a uh, really um, interesting uh, experience. And uh, so I had a question. Um, so you gave us uh, the obstacles. So the regional authorities know down now on which obstacles they have to work. Uh, but According to you, these ob obstacles for the digital solutions, um, are they also the same or more or less the same for uh, the implementation or of, of real uh, precision medicine, like uh, genome projects? I'm, I, that is not something that we have studied, so I'm afraid I could not, <laughs> I could not tell you. That was outside the scope of these studies. Yeah, but you're failing. I, I guess the, the obstacles are more or less the same as for the access and for the uh, lack of interest or the, um, the cultural or um, legislative obstacles. That, that that could be, uh, of course. I mean, uh, I, th I think those are whatever solutions you try to to implement uh, in 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 healthcare and social care sector. I think those uh, those areas that we that we point at. And uh, we point at legislation, we point at the, the importance of management and change management. We pour, point at the, the importance of economic incentives. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, economic incentives, for instance, as, a, as an example of an, a lacking economic incentive we found in Iceland where there was, well, lacking economic incentives for video consultations. That is, uh, doctors were 
were not uh, were not paid or not sufficiently yeah. paid to yeah. do video consultations. So yeah, it was not seen as a real consultation. No, no, for for different for different reasons, is it was not implemented. So so there are. I think I think you may say that those obstacle areas of obstacles yeah. that we point point out that they are 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 quite general. And I think the important point here is that you will have to do deal with all the obstacles. Yeah, yeah, if it, yeah. it, it's not enough if you solve the technical mm -hmm. obstacles, but you don't have the healthcare staff with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then you have the very good solutions, but you don't have the economic incentives. You don't have the legislation in place. So all yeah. these areas have to go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, you didn't mention the education of the patient or am I wrong? Or do you see it also in the cultural or lack of interest problem? I, I, th I think uh, the, the impression now in, in our study, we, we interviewed uh, healthcare staff, both in the healthcare sector and in the social care sector at, at um, senior level, um, governance level, uh, and then also the fractioneers. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we did not interview patients. But our impression from the healthcare staff is that the patients are better prepared than the organizations or the, the, the staff. So, so my my and and also when we see the figures, uh, uh, people using uh, tablets and mobile phone yeah, for accessing data that is increasing. Mm -hmm. So I think the need for educating the the general population. I would say that is fairly low. That would be yeah. my it's it's going by itself. Mm -hmm. But then of course we may have targeted groups such as for instance uh, people with disabilities that need yeah. special help or, or elderly that have not been part of this digital transformation. Yeah. OK, thanks a lot. I hope you can stay also till one because I still have some questions, but now I uh, let a word to Yolene. Thanks a lot. OK. Thanks. Thank you, Anna and Cynthia. So 